A quick disclaimer, these are mostly facts, but some of them are opinions, so keep that in mind before you type anything in the comments about the things that I say in this video. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. On with the video. What if I told you there was a game that did everything right? What if I asked you to name a game that followed that description? Would it be Rocket League? Terraria? Maybe Subnautica? Well, with Fortuna being released recently, I thought I'd share my thoughts on a game that I've come to enjoy a lot recently, and that being Warframe. Warframe is a game that I've played way earlier in the past, way before I even made this video. The reason why I put it down after trying it was because I didn't see the appeal to it. You jumped around killing people just to explore planets with a dull storyline and barely any replayability. I played a little bit, bought the weapons that you could only obtain with credits, got all of it to level 30, and called it a day. I had just finished the Kubo quest at that time and I felt like the game was over even though I had three planets and a companion. And then the Plains of Eidolon came out. Honestly, I thought it was just a large open area where you would kill people. But somehow, over 20,000 people were playing it when I was. And I never understood why, until one day. I was bored out of my mind one day and decided to look at some free games on Steam and see if any new ones popped up that I could try out. And I saw Warframe, third on the list. This was surprising to me because when I checked it a few months earlier, it was on the second page. So I thought to myself, they must be doing something right. So I convinced myself to have another go at MMOs and to try this one out again. Not only did I try it out again, I was determined to know why this game had such an effect on free to play games that everyone was talking about, so I made an entirely new account on behalf of doing things right this time. Okay so now before I go any further, I would like to point out that in almost any game I'm a meta player, meta stands for most effective tactic available, uh, I do things the best and fastest way in the game as I feel that's the best way to enjoy myself. Um, how does this have to do with anything? Well, you'll see later. I quickly found myself understanding the game more, for several more reasons. The most important one, that I was blown away on how helpful the community is as I got involved and how devoted they are to helping new players out. I suffered this on my first run, I didn't have the help I needed to understand where I was going in the game and all I needed was a little bit of information to help me. Believe me when I say the Warframe community does everything but throw you down. And I mean it when I say it's the best community I've ever been in. People literally give you stuff for no reason as an act of kindness, and you don't need to look for people, unless you're looking for anyone in the game. Another reason I've been playing this game is because of the depth. For a free to play model, it's absurd how crazy and deep the progression systems and the mechanics of the game are, and how binary they are compared to games that completely coat their game in RNG to make it feel new and fresh to new players. There's a name for that, it's called fake depth and it's fun to immerse yourself in at the start, but it gets on your nerves after a while. That being said, it's the complete opposite with Warframe. There are numbers on your mods and your Warframe stats to show exactly how your abilities and strategies play out in game. Not a lot of games do this, and it's kind of sad to see developers stray off this mechanic. But I'll tell you right now, this game won't appeal to you if you don't like really grindy games. So nothing comes easy and you may have to repeat a few actions to get what you want. Similar to a game like Terraria where a boss has multiple drop chances on different weapons and gear. Even the raw items like Warframes and weapons you can get. They're extremely different and almost all can't be compared to each other. A unique build I'm going to show you for an example is not what you'd expect when I said the word melee. So a weapon called the Atarax, great weapon by the way, you should definitely try it out. It's a whip with a spiky ball at the end. And what people found out is by taking advantage of its high critical chance and the range you get when you slide attack, you can use mods like Reach, Blood Rush, and Maiming Strike to turn your Atarax into a spinny death wheel. There are tons of other weapon builds that are achievable in the game, and me going into depth would bore you. So I'll let you explore for yourself and form your own opinion. One thing I still can't figure out is why the amazing quests and storylines are so deep in the game and so far ahead of any other free to play game. Don't worry, I won't spoil anything for you, but it's almost like not even that smart business wise to introduce a storyline so late into the game when new players are deterred away by the lack of any story early on. 
Sure, there are quests, but they don't even scratch the itch that many of us had when we were experiencing the quests for the first time. The sheer detail and the time that went into the storyline and the way the quests all blend together to form a story that is shaped around your Warframe and its decisions are beyond belief. I'm still wanting to go back and play them just because of how pristine and high quality they are. I'm also impressed by how the game works around the market and trading, and how Platinum, the premium currency in the game, can be earned simply by playing and trading items received in the game. Mods are easily obtainable in missions from wave rewards or even the mobs you kill in the game, and have a price set to them in the market. There's even tradable weapons in Warframes, and they're all listed on a fan made website named Warframe.market, a fast and easy way to trade for Platinum that you can use right in your browser. I'll be honest, what Warframe does not do well is how the gear and items are shown to you. When you're new, you're told to go to your market in your orbiter to purchase new Warframes and weapons, but they immediately sign a Platinum purchase to weapons to make it look like you have to buy them with Platinum. That's where people get the pay to win vibe when they try this game out. They see the credits and they automatically assign that those are the only weapons you can buy. Little do they know, they can ma be made with almost no resources and can entirely be made out of uh, obtainable items in-game. And it never ends either. The developers at Digital Extremes have definitely earned my respect tenfold, and are passionate about the longevity of this game, and are updating the game with new stuff constantly. Just recently, before Fortuna, there was an update that added new a new type of mission called Arbitrations, which are meant for the hardcore players, something Warframe has been dry off for a while now. What isn't mentioned is the hotfixes that come after updates. They come out lightning fast after an update goes live, sometimes minutes after, which developers could learn from in terms of game quality and consistency. An update called Fortuna just released a few days ago, and it features another huge open world story driven area for you to explore. So if you're wondering why I've been missing the past month or so, uh, just know that this game has casted a curse or something on me and I just I can't seem to put it down. I've logged over 600 hours in the past 4 months and it's not showing any signs of stopping suit. If you haven't tried Warframe yet, definitely give it a try. Even if you've played it and didn't like it before, it's changed so much. And it's free. So what's to lose?